All right, it is time for Friday Reads. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. In my Friday Reads videos, I share how my reading has been going, including what I've finished, what I've started, and anything interesting that I'm carrying over week to week. And I think I do have a little bit of everything. Oh, one of them I may not have mentioned last week. I don't know. We're just going to roll with it. I do think I have a little bit of everything. I do have a little bit of a lot of things. That is a true statement. That is a true statement. Let's go with that for this week. <laughs> and let's start, as always, with the finishes. Now, this is one that I think I mentioned last week, but I hadn't quite finished yet, and that is The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin, oh, by Beatrix Potter. This is the second in the Beatrix Potter works that follow Peter Rabbit. I can't remember what the name of the series is. It says, I put down the world of Beatrix Potter, but I think it's supposed to have Peter Rabbit on the end of that, but that's a really long name for a series. Anyway, so um, I mentioned this probably in every Friday read so far that I have been reading the works of Beatrix Potter, um, and it might be something that I work on throughout this year. Uh, there is just over 20 of them, and they're like 30 to 40 pages of illustrated um, kids' books, and they're all illustrated in this sort of, they kind of look like sort of pen and pencil crayon, kind of, which is a style that I am actually a big fan of. I like how the gradation of the tone that you can get and the uh, variety of value and the lights and the darks and I just think it's really nice and it's a pretty classic um, sort of nature uh, journaling and sketching uh, type of look and I, I tend to like it so but also I like the stories because they're really cute and I, I mentioned Squirrel Nut can last week who is a squirrel who um, goes with on the squirrels like seem to every day go across the water to forage and um there's an owl there that's a bit surly and 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 everyone's very sort of you know nice to the owl and gives the owl presents and stuff like that but not squirrel nutkin squirrel nutkin's like hey how's it going and like sings little songs and so i i kind of appreciated that sort of enthusiastic spirit i know that's probably a huge shocker um but uh you know the other squirrels are not so happy about it anyway it was a really cute tale and i really enjoyed it and i did finish it i think i finished it after like right after um, uh, I did my last Friday reads. They do not take a long time to read, but I like to read things as they go. And I am going to switch to reading the, a bind up of the, um, Beatrice Potter works, which is available on Everand. I actually don't know what the third one is, but I'll probably start it next week. <laughs> so that was my only finish. I can't believe that was my only finish, but uh, at least I had one. It's a really light year so far. I think I've only finished five things and two were Beatrix Potter. I, you know, but I don't feel like it's any kind of race and I haven't really made any goals. And when I don't make any goals, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> then I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> so I guess reading the Beatrix Potter is, is shaping up to be a bit of a goal. Um, it's not a huge challenge, um, but it doesn't have to be a challenge. Anyway, so I think that's part of what's going on is that I don't have a lot of direction yet, which is what happens at the beginning of the year. So it's totally normal for me to take some time uh, before deciding what to do. Um, in terms of a sort of kind of goal that I'm sort of doing <laughs> is I also did start um, a reread of uh, Oedipus the King or Oedipus the King. I've never been able to figure out how to say it. This is by Sophocles. I've read it at least twice. Um, and last year, in the middle of the year, I realized um, I wanted, well, one of my goals for last year was to try some classic plays um, and see which playwright I might want to read their works because I finished the works of Shakespeare several years ago and then I finished the works of Ibsen. So last year I read a couple of different plays and then I watched a production from Theater of War, uh, their production of Ajax or selections from Ajax which is one of the one of Sophocles's plays and it was brilliant. And I'm like, well, why don't, why don't I go with Sophocles? And so like, I have already read the three in this bind up, which is Antigone, uh, Oedipus the King and Oedipus at Clonus. But I decided just to just start at the beginning, which was with, I think, Ajax. I can't remember. There are seven plays that I am going to be working through. Oedipus the King is the middle. That's the fourth one. Um, so I am going to continue that. So, um, yeah, so I started this this week and I, I barely, I barely remember that I did. I'm not far into it. I've read like 10 pages. Um, but 
it is a reread for me. I read it several years ago, and then I listened to it on audio shortly thereafter. Um, it is brilliant. It is brilliant. It's one of those weird things because the story of like the archetype, the thing about Oedipus, I think we all know. Um, but so I didn't think it would be an interesting story, not not because it's sort of known and also it's creepy. Um, but the oh, but the, not the book, the play. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So I've only read a little bit of it so far, and I probably, it's actually been a couple of days, so I probably should just go back and reread it. I do find for me plays are best start to finish, especially one like this that has some uh, intricate uh, character dynamics and um, great storytelling, and it won't take me long. So I did start this, but it sounds like I already need to restart it. So, and I think I would try, I think finishing the works of Sophocles, the plays at least, um, is, is might shape up to be a goal. We'll see. Um, I, I, I do feel like I'm almost halfway through and I have enjoyed all the ones that I've read. Ajax was harder to understand, so I'm glad that I watched a performance and heard some commentary first but generally I do like to go to the work first but for that one it worked out so anyway so yeah so Oedipus the King apparently I will be uh rereading that <laughs> and then one that I think I had already started but I'm not sure if I had mentioned yet is um and I could I'm, I've had a hard time finding like concrete information about this work in in a variety of different ways um but in terms of like even this oh, it says on this do not repost oh gosh well i mean it's all i got so far why would you put something on pinterest unless you wanted people to see it so i'm sorry but i'm going to show it yikes okay so this is um omniscient reader this is obviously i think this is a fan poster um i think that's probably why it says do not repost i don't know so anyway but um Omniscient Reader or Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, art by Sleepy C, adapted by Umi, original story by Sing and Song. I'm reading this via Webtoons, um, and this is for Dai's Monochrome Manga Club, one of their um, first in series selections for January. So I'm, it's not the end of the month yet, but I am a bit behind. And this is actually a manhwa, um, and there is also a light novel. And so sometimes when I've been trying to like find information about the title, I've gotten information about the light light novel um and um so but I'm reading it on webtoons and I am reading the first nine chapters I'm in chapter eight I was really hoping to be done um by the time of filming this but I'm not done yet so anyway this is um a really interesting story um it follows someone who is like this be like the only person who sticks with a very very long running uh series and then there's a mysterious incident that and now it looks like the world is mimicking the events from the series that they alone have the knowledge from because they did stick with it so that's why it's called omniscient reader because omniscient means all-knowing um so this is a really it's a really interesting setup um and i like the characters uh so far i like some of the some of it's really wild like some of it i find is like really out there and i really like those elements um but i do have a little bit of a tough time with some of the other elements because i find that there is a fair amount of of violence um in terms of and and a, there's a, the i don't i don't know why what to how to describe it but like the hook or or at least so far uh is a bit of a sort of like moral dilemma and i feel very strongly about my my perspective on it and and I just I have a hard time with um the not even thought about it it's something that's often used in like horror movies I think like Saw and I I just like I'm like no I just I don't find and I think at other times in my life I would find it an interesting and engaging question or what would you do or what would you do and I'm just like no you wouldn't do like doing that is wrong <laughs> doing that is wrong I feel like much more like that about it but I'm curious to see where it goes I am close to what feels like the like what what the amount to read for the month is and I'm curious to see where that's going to leave it I haven't read anything on webtoons uh, before so that's been an interesting experience it's just like it's like an eternal scroll and for the chapter and then you choose the next chapter at the bottom 
and I'm glad that I have been able to read um, everything so far. So that's just interesting to uh, have something new and actually it ended up the timing being perfect because I've been having challenges with reading from my library, which is where I read a lot of my um, manga from, although this, this is manhwa. So, um, uh, and I, yeah, I, so I am enjoying it, but I find the story a bit disturbing, but it, I will say there is some discussion of it. There, that's not true. There, there isn't discussion of the moral question, but there has been some alternatives provided. So I feel like there's, there's, there's enough to keep me, but I do find it hard. And I think there's just some themes, um, and this will come up probably in my film uh, video tomorrow. There's some themes and some situations that I'm just less interested in seeing uh, when it comes to violence. I find it hard to distance myself um, from like the like the the horribleness of would someone really do that? What would they? And then if you see a character do that, it kind of feels like saying that people would. And I and that I don't and I don't, I'm not necessarily saying that this author is saying that. You know, I feel like this is more of like this is a setup with a good hook, and let's see where the story goes. So I don't know. So um, maybe I'm reading too much into it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but um, I do find, but that's just for me, I find I'm less and less, uh, I'm having more and more trouble, or I have more and more trouble and less and less interest in some particular themes as it relates to violence. So I'm finding it tough, especially because I definitely tend to read at night and then I don't like having those thoughts in my brain <laughs> that late at night. So anyway, I will finish it off. And But I had a hard time coming finding a cover um, and that like this particular style, I think people often use as a sort of fan fiction kind of thing or I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway, and so uh, what is on the horizon? Um, and that is, this is the first volume. Sometimes when I share, when I'm reading for manga, I'll just share the first volume cover because as we go on, you can get a little spoiler. So, but I am going to, I'm really thrilled that my hold for My Love Mix-Up Volume 9 came in. This is Volume 1. Um, but Volume 9 came in and from the library and it is the last volume. So I'm super Super excited about getting to finish off a series. Um, I didn't start it yet. I only had it 11 days as of last Sunday, so I really got to get to it. Um, I wanted to finish Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint first. Um, so, and this is a high school set romance -y. Um, uh, manga that sort of starts with, uh, as you can probably tell by the title, My Love Mix-Up. It starts with a bit of a misunderstanding um, and it kind of, it's really cute. I actually find it quite a sweet story um, and I've really enjoyed where it's gone and I'm really looking forward to getting back to it and finishing it off. Uh, and I can't remember when the last, when I read volume 8, I don't know if it was in the fall or earlier in the year, but I do prefer to like read if the whole thing is out, but I don't think the whole thing was out, or at least it wasn't translated and available at the library when I started reading it, which was mid last year at some point. So anyway, I'm really happy about that. So I'm looking forward to reading volume nine. And then I'm just carrying on with some of the other stuff. But honestly, I haven't made any progress with my carryovers, which are what do I have? I have um, that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> that's totally different. That's not supposed to be there. I got I got some of my Oh, there's the Tale of Squirrel Nutkin from last week, the orange cover. That was a better one. Um, I haven't finished March Comes In Like a Lion yet, and I haven't made any progress on The Mysterious Affair at Styles, nor The Sundering, which are the things that I'm carrying over. I just have not been reading a lot this week, and I really wanted to finish Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, and I didn't get to my um, point of view, my, my goal uh, of the pages. It also doesn't have pages, so I'm estimating... I'm estimating. I'm estimating that each chapter is 30 pages. I just picked, I just picked a number. I don't know. So nine volumes, nine chapters being 300 pages feels about right. It's nine because the first chapter is a chapter titled zero. So doing the math on my pages has been a little... <laughs> a little I had to I made some creative choices and um or I made some choices I just I feel like that I mean for for manga one chapter being 30 pages seems reasonable to me like it seems I I don't know anyway that's what I decided 
<laughs> I mean, there's no, there's, I, I don't have any page count goals or anything. I just like keeping records. And so, and you know, so sometimes you need to sort of figure out how to, how to do that for the things, um, you know, uh, that are different formats. So anyway, so I'm doing my best with that. So it's been not the greatest reading week. Um, I just really haven't read a lot. And as I mentioned, I haven't really picked my goals for next year or for the next year. We're already here, Shannon, 2024. <laughs> um, and so I don't know. And I can't figure out if, um, I haven't even finished my stats for last year. I have everything notated. I just haven't done all of the sort of summaries uh and stuff so but I don't know what goals I want this year and it's making me feel very unfooted that's not a term ungrounded I guess uh but I think it's also just the reality and uh, again I've mentioned this before I'm coming back to doing videos way earlier than I normally would so this I think just generally is how my reading is the truth is I'm still reading pretty much every day even there was one day I didn't read this week but every other day I did read so I mean, that's good, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't like not having goals. I just, uh, but I get really, once I commit to something, I really commit. So this is why I usually take this time of year to sort of suss things out because I can't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So anyway, but I do know what to do. I'm going to continue reading. I'm going to finish Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. I'm going to start and finish uh, My Love Makes Up Volume 9 and re restart Oedipus the King and then whatever the next uh, Beatrix Potter is. So I know what I'm going to be reading. Oh, and I do have the next um, uh, read for Izzy with Buddy Read with Izzy and Kay Kelly. We have decided to read uh, the first book in the Nevermore series, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I think it is. Um, mine just arrived yesterday, so it's a reread for me. So I'll be starting that too. So I know what I'm reading. I just don't know what my goals are. <laughs> And I can't, I have not done any reflection since last year and since the currently reading challenge. And I guess that's really still sitting with me. I do want to read the works of Sophocles. I feel pretty strongly about that. So, I mean, I don't know. I got to figure stuff out. I haven't yet. That's okay. I always have a messy start to the year or, or this fluxy flux start of the year. And, but I, I did finish one title. One, one 35 page illustrated kids book that's like yay hi <laughs> it, I guess you know it's not all about the finishes but it's weird not to have finishes when I mean last year I read I think around 300 titles so to only have five when we're more almost at the end of the month feels a bit low that's fine I don't it's volume isn't a goal for me I just tell good read something it's like, I just put in the same number. I put in 120. I, I have read over 50. Once I started consistently reading over 50 titles a year, I just put in 120 every year. I don't consider it my Goodreads goal. I just put it there so it stops bugging me to choose something. I don't I don't have a yearly goal or a monthly goal of how many titles to read. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just reading. I'm just reading. Anyway, so obviously a bit of a here there everywhere Friday reads and let me know how you're doing with your reading um have you picked any goals for the year do you not pick goals for the year any suggestions if you don't pick goals for the year because I am feeling a little ungrounded and but I once I get grounded it's hard to move me <laughs> so maybe maybe I should stay ungrounded until I feel confident about some of the goals the Beatrix Potter and the Sophocles I think are are, are in I think those are in We'll see what else makes the cut. <laughs> All right. Obviously, it's been a bit of a wonky reading week, but did read some stuff and looking forward to finishing Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint and checking out the Discord and seeing what everyone thought of it um, uh, for Dai's Monochrome Manga Club. And um, yeah, so I think that's really my big goal for the week. And uh, I will see what I get up to next week. All right. Hope you are having a wonderful weekend and I'll be back with another video soon. I will have another film related video up tomorrow with what I watched in the third week of the year. Okay, thank you so much for watching.